My question is, is it too easy to gain an Australian citizenship? Is it, a pri it is a privilege to live in Australia and abide by our rules and standards. If people choose to act in a terrorist way, why shouldn't they be sent back from where they came from, minus their Australian passport? Philip Braddock. Well, that's the very question that the Prime Minister, in appointing me as his envoy for citizenship and community engagement, has asked me to look at. Um, and there is this document um, which no sets props out... allowed in Parliament and none on Q&A. <laughs> uh, it's, it's very different here. Very different here. No, it isn't. Um, but I, you know, I'd like people to have a look at it because it raises a number of issues, and you can get this document if you go. To, I'm supposed to be literate in relation to this modern technology. <laughs> Citizenship dot gov.au. Mm -hmm. um, you will be able to pick it up and you'll be able to make some comments if you wish. Um, but it is, it is a real question. Um, and let me just put my own view strongly first. We are a remarkable society. We have 25% of our population overseas born. Um, that is a higher proportion than any other countries than Israel and Luxembourg larger than the United States, Canada, any of the other countries you think about. If cultural diversity was a problem, we would have the most significant problems in the world. And we don't. Um, but it doesn't mean that it's perfect. Sir James Gobbo put down many years ago the statement for a multicultural Australia, the national agenda for a multicultural Australia. And it emphasised the importance of acknowledging people's different religions, um, their different races, different cultures, treating people fairly and respectfully, ensuring that people can fully participate in our society, but subject to the acceptance of what we regard as the overriding commitments uh, to being Australian. And that is acceptance of the rule of law, uh, parliamentary democracy um, and the like. And the question is, when people take up Australian citizenship, do they know what those obligations are? How are they best going to be informed? Because we don't expect people Philip, when they Philip, become Australian to be We've got, we've got some other terrorists. questions that, that are going to go to those issues, but let's just stick to the one that the questioner has raised, and that is whether you can send people back to where they came from after you strip them, strip them of their citizenship. Mm -hmm. And you have actually said um, you could only do that if they were eligible for another citizenship. Now, you've just identified that's 25% of the population of Australia. So I guess the question is here, are 25% of the population going to be seen differently in terms of their citizenship rights than the other 75%? Well, um, you haven't got it quite right because there are also those people who were born in Australia um, and have uh, one parent overseas born. All right, okay. And that gets to 50%. Um, it's almost a majority. Um, look, the point... So that means that if you were born here with Australian parents, you could not be eligible for some other citizenship and you could not have your citizenship stripped away from you under any circumstances. Isn't that right? No, let me deal first with, are you, is it possible for people to be stripped of their citizenship? It is possible now. And it's been possible since we had the Citizenship Act in 1949. That is possible. If you obtained your citizenship by fraud, it can be removed. If you fight for a foreign army uh, against Australia, uh, it can be removed. If you commit treason, it can be removed. Now, the question is, if you don't fight for a foreign army, you fight for something that's far worse, you don't even observe the rules of law, you're part of a terrorist organisation, should you be treated differently and be able to retain your citizenship. Now, the legislation the government plans to introduce in the next uh, sitting fortnight will deal with that issue. The additional question that is being examined, and my uh, arrangements with uh, Senator Conchetta Ferranti Wells uh, requires us to look at it, is whether you can remove the citizenship of somebody who has another citizenship entitlement, that is, because they were born of an overseas uh, parent, or a person who had migrate, migrated to Australia. So, um, so that Philip, is, Philip, I'm just going to that is a separate you. question. I'm just going to interrupt you, sorry, but we have another question on this subject. I'm going to go to that before we hear from our other panellists. It's from uh, Sangeetha Pillar. Uh, my question's for, for Philip Ruddock um, as well. And 
I completely acknowledge the need to have laws in Australia that protect against um, against terrorism um, and deal with the with, with threats to national security. Um, Australian law currently, we have a large number, we have over 60 laws designed to prevent against, protect against terrorism and in the case of citizens who pose a risk to national security, the law already allows for passport cancellation, um, the law already allows for sentences of up to life, with maximum sentences of life imprisonment where a person is convicted of a preparatory, um, an act in preparation um, for terrorism, and the law already allows for control orders where a person is poses a national security risk but is not convicted. My question is, what do, does the government's proposal to um, revoke the citizenship add to this existing arsenal of laws? Well, I, the point I would make is, of all those that you mentioned, only one of them might impact upon an Australian who is abroad fighting with a terrorist organisation, and that is the cancellation of their passport. Um, the other matters uh, would not be dealt with because they're not here. Um, and this is a question that you have to ask yourself. Um, I think, in relation to most murders, um, behaviour that is spontaneous um, is unlikely to be influenced by uh, the nature of the uh, sentence you might suffer, or even if you had a death penalty, the prospect of execution. Um, and I've argued that as one who's opposed to capital punishment very strongly. Mm -hmm. But when you are dealing uh, with uh, terrorism, which is not spontaneous, which is clearly premeditated, uh, this is a matter that you can address that brings home to people the seriousness of the matter and that there are consequences. But the crucial question for me